Hi guys, so just over 100 days in and Brexit still hasn't shown any signs of improvement. UK exporters are actually reporting a 41% drop in overseas sales with Europe. This data comes from a new survey by one of the UK's leading business organisations. The British Chamber of Commerce is calling on Boris Johnson's government to get back round the table with the European Union and start new negotiations to lower some of the barriers to trade created by Boris Johnson's Christmas Eve trade and cooperation agreement due to the massive collapse in exports. It must be remembered, of course, that some of the decline is due to the pandemic, yes. But the British Chamber of Commerce said many firms were blaming new post-Brexit changes for shipping delays, increased cost in transportation of goods, and extensive new red tape. Now, the response from Boris Johnson's ministers so far has been that these are teething problems. Following the transition out of the single market and the customs union on the 1st of January, which has been dismissed by the British Chamber of Commerce. The group is warning that structural issues that go unaddressed could lead to long-term weakness for the UK export sector, so bad that in some cases the damage could be irreversible. Now, the ONS should release trade figures today for the month of February. These will be closely looked at for any evidence of any long-term impact Brexit will have on exports to the EU. The government had suggested that the 41% drop in sales, which equals about £5.6 billion in real terms, was due to the teething problems following the end of the Brexit transition period. Now, a number of businesses have also relayed their problems to the British Chamber of Commerce, one of them a clothing wholesaler. They told the Chamber that its sales to the EU27 had collapsed dramatically since the beginning of the new year. The owner of the business said how both European individuals and businesses who would normally trade with him had been reluctant to buy from the United Kingdom. He said that this immediate drop in turnover for his company meant there will be redundancies coming. He said that he had been speaking to a foreign investor who originally had plans to turn the UK operation into a European distribution hub, but that is now dead. The wholesaler also went on to say that the only distribution taking place at the moment for his business is within the UK, as anything else is no longer cost effective. Of 2,900 exporting firms, 41% reported a decrease in sales over the first three months of 2021. The British Chamber of Commerce also said that export sales are at the lowest levels ever recorded, and given that the situation is actually getting worse and not better, it means that both exporters and government should be concerned. The Chamber continues to reinforce the idea that exporters are suffering issues that go far and beyond the problems created by the pandemic. While its quarterly economic survey showed some positive news, the group's latest report does not only show that exports are failing to recover, but continuing to drop. Now, while businesses in Great Britain suffer, there may actually be some positive news for those in Northern Ireland. The British government is moving slowly towards a new deal with the European Union on Brexit arrangements for Northern Ireland with potentially the possibility of easing border checks on certain goods. Now, officials in both London and Brussels have in the past two weeks been involved in what has been described as technical talks over the future checks on food, plants and parcels going from Great Britain to Northern Ireland. Remember, Great Britain is outside the single market and the customs union. So a spokesman for Boris Johnson at number 10 told the press that the discussions had been constructive, but there were still significant differences that needed to be resolved. Now, in a bit of nostalgia for Brexit watchers, the Cabinet Minister David Frost, who was once the Brexit chief negotiator, spoke by phone to the European Commission Vice President Sheshkovich recently. This has been seen in some quarters as a very positive development. Now, before Brexiteers and Unionists in Northern Ireland get their hopes up that the protocol will be dumped, it seems that while progress has been made in Northern Ireland, the two men's efforts did not involve removing checks on goods but instead they concentrated 
on removing a series of rolling deadlines from implementation of border controls. So basically, they're just changing dates on a calendar. However, in some progress that could be welcomed in Northern Ireland, one particular option is a new series of agreed milestones to be achieved. This would include agreement with business and civic society before each stage of the protocol is implemented. Somewhat similar to what Boris Johnson has been doing with the latest lockdown, following data, not dates. Now, it must be remembered that relations between the European Union and the UK government are at a low point at the moment. This is due to both the UK not holding to its side of the bargain when it came to putting in place the checks necessary on goods moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland, and its unilateral decision to extend the grace periods for checks on supermarket goods moving across the Irish Sea. Now, of course, Boris Johnson's government has been trying to downplay the current disagreement with the European Union, saying that it is due to a mismatch of communications last month. This could be a positive and pragmatic move by Boris Johnson's government, but it remains to be seen. To reinforce the point that the UK government is going to work within the protocol, Brandon Lewis, the Northern Ireland Secretary, told political parties in Belfast that the Northern Ireland Protocol is going nowhere, and he has made appeals for them to sit down and resort to dialogue. There is, of course, a political need to calm the atmosphere in Northern Ireland, but there is also an understanding in London, Dublin and Brussels that any deal centering on the protocol will not address the loyalist riots. Brexit checks down the Irish Sea have enraged loyalist communities who see the trade border as an attack on Northern Ireland's place within the United Kingdom. The current discussions are focusing on a new implementation programme outlined in a plan delivered by London to Brussels over two weeks ago. The European Union has also made a request for real-time access to customs and border check data in Belfast ports. The European Union have said the most simple way out of this problem would be for Britain to agree to align food standards with those of the bloc. This position had, of course, been the best possible Brexit. And I had said before that it was never a requirement of Brexit for the UK as a whole to leave the single market and the customs union. The Irish government have said they understand the situation is difficult, but believe a great achievement would be to have a veterinary deal between the UK and EU, which would go some way to solve the problems facing importers in Northern Ireland, those who deal with Great Britain. Perhaps the biggest stumbling block is not the EU and what Brexiteers call their stubbornness on rules, but Brexiteers themselves, principally those within Boris Johnson's cabinet and his party. They, along with the DUP, would actually prefer the status quo and the damage it's causing to Northern Ireland than EU alignment. It would be seen by some Brexit supporters, of course, as a complete U-turn and a betrayal of Brexit. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?